Hey, what you playing? You playing Halo? No, man. I'm playing Life is Strange. You ever hear of it? No, I, I haven't heard of it before. It doesn't look too interesting. It looks like you're just walking around, though. Yeah, but that's not the entire game, though. There's so much this game has to offer. Well, I mean, what makes it good? I'm so glad you asked. Are you, are you talking to me or the internet right now? So here we are talking about a game that released five years ago. Five years ago. And it's already had a prequel spinoff and a sequel. And I'm still asking you to give this game a chance. You, you're seeing this in the title. Why Life is Strange is so good. You might be saying to me, like, Adam, it's been five years. Why should I give it a chance? And I'm still asking you to give it a chance in 2020. And you could argue with me that sure, Life is Strange might have been part of a niche audience, but I'd argue right back at you that if you went to high school in America, I feel like it was mostly set in high school America, Seattle, um, Oregon. Yeah, Oregon, it was Oregon. Good job, Adam. I can't clap my hands. But I'd argue right back at you that if you went to high school, you can relate to this game. And I'm asking you to give it a chance. But before we get started, hi, my name is Adam. And if you're new here and you're a human being, maybe you should click that subscribe button so that you know when all these videos come out and join our community of other human beings. We have videos like this every other Saturday as well as a weekly podcast, The Games Groceries Podcast. So if you're so inclined, you should click that subscribe. So it's five years after release, and more importantly, we're about to hit the next generation of consoles. So why should I even ask you to make the time to be playing this game right before next gen hits, right when 2020 is giving a Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy VII Remake, all these fantastic Animal Crossing New Horizons, by the way. But in this video, I hope to make an argument and convince you that maybe you should take eight hours in your backlog to play Life is Strange. And I have three reasons why Life is Strange is so good. So while it may not be on the same level of continuity as say God of War on the PS4, and by the way, just a small argument to play God of War PS4, the one shot mentality of God of War was so beautifully done. So while I'm not going to argue that the continuity of Life is Strange is as good as God of War, I will still like to say that Life is Strange's continuity during the school week is absolutely fantastic. And not only that, but I feel like it's so relatable. You'll notice as soon as you boot up the game because you know, you can only get it in the physical copy and the episodes are already there for you. So you're gonna notice right away that every level is designed episodically. It's not level one, level two, kind of like uh, God of War is just the continuity of it. But each episode represents a day of the week. So episode one is Monday, episode three is Wednesday and so on and so forth. And I think it's really well crafted that you get to follow Max Caulfield, the main character in one school week. It's not a Saturday or Sunday. It's a time in school, like you're in high school, Monday through Friday. And I, and I think that's so well done, I think. All of us have been in high school before, at least I, I think we've all been through high school before. And sometimes in high school, we all have that high school drama, the build up, so many rumors come around and it kind of builds up in the entire week. There's very rarely an occasion where high school drama kind of fizzles out after a day. You know, you go into school Monday and it lasts and you, trying to fizzle it out and you're talking with your friends and it's, it builds up during the school week and then you get to the weekend and then it fizzles out because it's party time. But I also believe that this sort of episodic way of saying through the school week is so immersive and, and detailed because there's not a lot of details left behind. You go into episode two and it's the next day. You, you're following Max Caulfield. You saw her Monday and what Monday looked like for her. So they can get right into Tuesday. And that builds this kind of binge worthy playthrough where you can play every single day and not a lot of details are left behind there. And I also feel like this way of storytelling throughout the week and each day 
goes on like an episode. It's a fantastic template for storytelling. You start off the week, your Monday, and you're introduced to the drama of your high school day, or your high school days, your weeks, whatever. And then Wednesday comes along and it's only the middle of the week and you don't know if you're gonna make it to Friday. You're not sure and you start to question, how am I gonna get through this? And Friday comes along and it's this absolute fantastic conclusion. I'm not gonna spoil it. By the way, no spoilers here because why would I convince you to play it and then I spoil it? That's stupid. Anyways, but it just makes the story that much more relatable and so much more easy to follow because that's how we proceed our weeks. That's how we proceed our days and kind of episodes almost. And I feel like that creates the immersion, the relatability. And I, and I think it's just, I think it's just great. And I feel like it's a more natural progression in the game. It's a, it's a much more easy to follow. So while this isn't the first game to do episodes like this or games like this, it's not the first game, but I think it's one of the great reasons why you should play this game. So the storytelling is great. I, I get it. it. It's on point, Adam. Great storytelling template. But what about the gameplay? I only care about the gameplay. Tell me about the gameplay. Well, maybe if you just stop yelling at me, maybe I'll tell you a little bit about the gameplay. Have you ever made a bad decision in high school and you just wish you had this sort of power to rewind time? You ever look back at your decisions and you just think, why did I make that? Like, why did I say that? And you, you just think back on these moments and you cringe so hard that your spine breaks? Uh, oh, you say you haven't? Uh, interesting, because we actually have the results from your polygraph test right here. Thank you, Liz. Let's uh, let's read this together. Ah, yes, just as expected. A liar! I think we all have made those decisions in high school, or those words that we said that we wish we had rewind powers just to go back and maybe change our decisions, or uh, even just fix our decisions, or something. And Life is Strange gives you that very power, and I think that's just so immersive, and it's one of those things that. I wish I had. Life is Strange is just sprawling with choices and dialogue options, and not just in the main story either. Every single character that you interact with in Life is Strange, the, the entire universe, all of Blackwell and the Two Whales Diner, all of those, like the choices you make will actually affect the world around you. And I think that's just really, really cool. You might have said something to a character or said something dumb in a dialogue choice or, you know, anything that you wish that, like, maybe I should have chosen something different. Maybe I didn't really mean that or that that's not really what I meant to say. And Life is Strange gives you that power to just rewind a dialogue choice. And it's one of those things that, man, there's some dialogues that I made in high school that... I want that rewind power. But that's what's so cool is that the rewind powers in Life is Strange allow you to handle dialogue systems just a little bit differently. It's a new twist and it's part of the gameplay. And not only does it allow you to uh, rewind some dialogue choices, but Don't Nod actually found ways to make puzzles with the, the rewind power and not in ways of Prince of Persia, but sometimes dialogue choices need you to rewind and they found great ways to introduce you to that and have you solve these different puzzles. Or even in, you know, the um, the, the, the one dumpster scene. Uh, again, not spoiling anything, but it's a really fun scene where you can rewind and it's kind of painful. If you played Life is Strange, you know what I'm talking about. Pew -pew. I feel like Don't Nod found a balance with the rewind powers where it really affects the game while not being overpowering. It's not something that ruins your experience that just like you kind of cheese through the game, but it's that balance where it just gives you that much more control of the game without controlling every single aspect of the game. I, I feel like that makes sense. Write in the comments down below. Does that make sense? So you're going through your days in high school with this sort of rewind power, but in the end, and again, no spoilers, I hope, I feel like there's a beautiful lesson to be learned that 
maybe these rewind powers that we all wish we had, that sort of taking back what we said or taking back decisions we've made, maybe that wish isn't something that is anybody needs because it will affect the world around you and it will affect the way your life is today. And I, and I think it's this message where you really sit back and start to think about were these decisions, like these decisions that I've made in my life, did they lead me to where I am today? And can I really blame myself to, for making those bad decisions? It's a power we all wish we had, but in the end, we should all learn to accept the choices we've made in the past and learn to live with them and not just live with them like a burden, but just start to move forward in life. But let me hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you had these sort of rewind powers, would you use them? Is all the decisions you've made in your life, do you have any regrets, I'm trying to say? Would you use them? How would you use them? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me hear all of them and any of them in the comments. But since I have just a little bit more of your time, let me take you through what really hooked me into Life is Strange and why I feel like it's going to hook you as well. I think what makes Life is Strange so great is the amount, the diversity of different characters and different character stories that I feel like anybody that plays this game can relate to. There's so many characters in Blackwell just walking around where there's more depth to the character that meets the eye and a lot of them just need a careful look and more dialogue with them, more conversation with them to get to know them a little bit better and start to understand that there's a lot more depth to them. And sure, you've got your main characters like Max, Chloe, Victoria, where you get to know them more naturally as the story progresses on. And yeah, and even those characters have a lot more to them, a lot more depth to them that meets the eye. But even the side characters like Kate Marsh or Warren or even Nathan Prescott require you to really get to know them, have more dialogues and start to understand them. Maybe go through their rooms a little bit, maybe rummage through their trash or stalk them a little bit, maybe read through their phones. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend getting to know a person like it does in the game. I, I would probably avoid in real life rummaging through somebody's trash to get to know them, but it's a video game. It's not the real world rummage through their trash. It's not exactly like the real world, but you get what I mean. There's a lot of people in your everyday life where there's a lot more to them that meets the eye. They're, they have a lot more depth behind them, but what it does require you to do is to have conversations with them and rummage a little bit through their trash. Every single character is not a one-sided character. Even, even Nathan Prescott, the one we are supposed to hate, has a story behind him. But what it requires you to do, this and their real life, is to you know, have more talks with them and be with them and start to understand them and have compassion for them. And once you do this, both in game and in real life, you'll find out that maybe they have a story that's similar to yours. Maybe they're going through something that you start to say that I've gone through that. I understand that I have compassion over that. And I feel like it gives a sort of lesson that you don't just treat every character in games or in real life as just a one off. I don't need to know any more of them. There's so much more to human beings that meets the eye. And that's what Life is Strange does. You'll, you'll find out that they wrote this so realistically that every character has a story that everybody can relate to. I feel like every character is written so beautifully and so carefully from issues like broken homes and suicidal thoughts to even being mentally unstable due to a high family expectation. And I feel like every single playthrough you get to learn more about the characters and why they feel like this. The suicidal thoughts come out of harassment. The mental instability comes from this sort of family dynamic saying that you are you have to be good enough, you have to keep up our name. And it's a sort of drive that to say that, yeah, human beings go through a lot and Life is Strange is a beautiful game to 
witnessed that. If you're not convinced to play Life is Strange from the episodic continuity or even the rewind powers, maybe learning the struggles of other human beings and how maybe it can relate to you as well, maybe that will convince you to jump in. I still think out of all these three things, I think the stories really drove in the point for me in Life is Strange. So I've talked long enough about the three things that I feel like Life is Strange is well worth playing. And it, by, if by the end of this video, if you still aren't convinced to play it, that's fine. I understand that. But honestly, I feel like Life is Strange is just eight to 10 hours worth of going through your backlog and just experience this sort of game where it tells real human emotions and real dialogue and just starting to understand that people go through things and maybe we should be there for them. And I feel like the rewind powers kind of give you this sort of power that you wish you had in high school. And the continuity of the episodes is really well written. I love the way Life is Strange is written. Some people didn't like the ending so much. I'm on the camp that episode four and five was really fantastic. The, the, the climax of the story really hits its peak and you start to get this really nice conclusion where it wraps everything up. I personally think the ending is great. And maybe sure, there's not enough action in there or not enough customization. Uh, you like a certain type of game and you have certain expectations. And again, that's fine. We talked about that in our coffee episode, but I still think it's well worth the time to understand and talk with people. And if you do end up picking up the game, if I did convince you, when you do play the game, talk to as many characters as possible, learn their stories and find out who they are as people, why they struggle through this. And there's so many things in, in the Life is Strange universe that is so relatable and real and raw. And I think if you take time with each character, you'll find that you relate to at least one person in that game. And if by some miracle that the creators of Life is Strange, they're, they're watching this episode, I wanna say thank you for making such an amazing experience and something that I won't forget for a long time. And more specifically, to Raul Barbe, thanks for following us on Twitter. I really appreciate that. Hey, what's up, human beings? Thanks for watching this episode. I, I feel like Life is Strange is one of my favorite games that I've ever experienced. And, and to be honest with you, I almost dropped it within the first 10 minutes of episode one. And I started to like, no, this isn't the game for me. But then I pushed more. And once I got to the 15 minute mark, maybe the 20 minute mark, that's when it started to really hook me in. And I and I hope you go into it knowing that there's a lot of human raw additions to this game. I don't know what else to say. And I hope I didn't scare off Raul, Bar Raul Barbe. I, I, I hope I'm saying his name right, but thanks for following us. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so that you know when these uh, come out, when all these uh, kind of episodes come out, as well as our weekly podcast. It comes out every single week. We hope you enjoy that. We really hope you're entertained by these videos. We work really hard on them. And not to say that we deserve an audience. We really do this. Even at this point, as, as we're filming this, we have 54 subscribers and we do it for the 54 people. We're doing this for you and we really hope you're entertained by it. So, you know, thank you for sticking around. So with all that said and done, I, I, should, I should get out of here. You're probably annoyed by my face. And if you're not, thanks. I'll see you in the next episode or the next podcast. Oh, I'm going away. Bye.